One of these men is the world's champion racing driver. What is your name, please? My name is Bill Hill. My name is Phil Hill. My name is Phil Hill. Only one of these men is the real Phil Hill. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Ralph Bellamy, Lorraine Day, Johnny Carson, and Betty White. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. <laughs> Brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Lorraine, may I take just a moment to welcome you to our show? Well, thank you very much, Bud. It's a pleasure to be here. It's our pleasure and our privilege, believe me. I hope you have a good time. I hope so, too. Now, panel, will you open up your envelopes and take out your affidavit cards for the first time tonight and follow along as I read. I, Phil Hill, am a professional race car driver. I drove my first race in 1948 in my own MG. For the past three years, I have been driving the Grand Prix circuit for the famous Italian Ferrari factory team. This year, in a series of seven races, I became the world's champion race driver. I am the first American to ever hold the title. Signed, Phil Hill. All right, gentlemen, are you all set and comfortable? Very well. As you heard, as I did, panel, these three gentlemen are all claiming to be Phil Hill, world's champion race driver, and we begin this first round of questioning with Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Uh, number one, uh, who did you win the title from? There is no defender. No defender? Well, who had it last year at Indianapolis? Last year, Jack Brabham had it. Number two, uh, what, what, is the, what is the course? Uh, I mean, uh, how, how far is the race? How long is the race? Well, there are a series of eight races, and they average between four to five hundred kilometers. Well, the last one, the last race at Indianapolis, the, the final, what is, how long is it? Well, the last one wasn't at Indianapolis. Oh, all right. Uh, number three, what's the purse? Well, the purse varies from race to race. How much did you win? Uh, I won uh, $5,000. Uh-huh. Uh, number one, uh... Lorraine. Uh, number one... What is Monza? It's a place. Number two, what is Monza? It's a place in Italy. Number three, wh uh, what is Monza? Monza is the place in Italy. What do they do there, number three? Well, uh, they, they have a racetrack there. Number one, <laughs> how many are on your team? How many does it take to uh, put your car on the uh, speedway? You mean the, the mechanics and the fact? Yes. About 30 or 40 people. About 30? Between 30, depending on the race. Number two, how many does it take you? 30 to 40. 10 30 years. to 40. Number three, does it take you 30 to 40? Generally, that's uh, about what they're... Johnny. What Monza was a sandwich. <laughs> uh, number two, can you tell me the name of... Uh, one driver who uh, competes in formula. In which formula? Formula cars. Who drives formulas? Well, they're Formula One and Formula Two uh, and others. Uh, All right. Number one, can you name me one driver who drives Formula One? Formula One, Bugatti. All right. Uh, number three, how many liter displacement does a Porsche have? 1,600 Porsche. Uh, uh, 1.6 liters. Number two? One and a half. Number one? 1.6 liters. All right. Betty. I don't want to ask them anything. I want to ask you a few things. Where did you learn all that? Uh, number two, uh, how many races in this Grand Prix circuit? Uh, usually seven, perhaps eight sometimes. You mentioned eight before, and I noticed on our affidavit here it, it says seven. Uh, how many of the seven races, number one, how many of the seven races did you win to win the title? I won two of them. Uh, number three, how many of the seven races did you win? I won two. Number two, where does the Grand Prix start and finish? Start and finish? The Grand Prix circuit. Well, it usually starts in Buenos Aires in January and uh, finishes up in June. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have. We'll have to grind over to the starting pits there and get our engineers out and start marking our ballots, if you don't mind, panel. So kindly do that right now. Without further questions and without any further consultation. Voting as you do so for number one, 
number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, as is our custom, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Ralph, all set? For whom did you vote? Uh, number one, and I have to say I touted myself on and off all three of them, but <laughs> perhaps number one looks more like a race driver, or a race driver should look. <laughs> Lorraine. Well, I voted for number two because uh, I don't think he looks like what a race driver should look like. We're going the other way. <laughs> one should right. be right. <laughs> Johnny, what did you select? I, I voted for number two. I, uh, I should know, but I don't. I uh, used to drive a little. I, I should know, but I, I think it's number two. Betty? Well, I voted for number one. I think all the answers, believe me, knowing as little as I do on this subject, they all confuse me completely. But number one looks so miserable. He looks like he'd much rather be driving than being here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have Ralph and Betty then at number one, and uh, Johnny and Lorraine number two. No votes for number three. Let's see how it comes out. As we learn right now, which one of these three gentlemen is the real race car driver and a champion at that? So will the real Phil Hill please Stand up. <laughs> Mr. Hill, as the saying goes, you really skunked him. That's <laughs> Incidentally, in addition to the many honors that Phil Hill has won this year, last Friday he was awarded the Martini and Rossi Trophy as Motor Sportsman of the Year for 1961. We're very proud to have him. Congratulations to you, sir. Let's find out about these other two intrepid drivers. Number one, you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Hannon Wexler. I'm an account executive for public relations firm of Lobsons and Company. <laughs> Number two, equally knowledgeable. What do you do and what is your real name? My name is Jack Morris. I'm New York District Advertising Sales Manager for Purchasing Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you did well. You really fooled the panel. That hasn't happened in a long time, believe me. And it's easy to count this the wrong vote this time because there were exactly four at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Salem Cigarettes. Not a bad night's pleasure, I think you'll admit and a carton of Salem's for each of you. Thank you, gentlemen, very much, and many years of very safe and winning driving to you, sir. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> we'll have another team of challengers to fool our panel in just a moment. Now may I present our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Pat Scott. My name is Pat Scott. My name is Pat Scott. All right, panel, you've had a look at the three involved. Let's look at the affidavit. Follow along with your copy, please. I, Pat Scott, am a syndicated newspaper columnist. I write a column for women on sewing. The column appears three times each week in some 80 papers throughout the country. In it, I answer questions from home sewers and give my readers hundreds of professional tips like how to make a gusset, how to stitch a dart, and how to sew in a zipper. I cover everything for the do-it-yourself girl from the making of a fancy ball gown to the sewing of slip covers. I call my column, Seems to Me. Signed, Pat Scott. Very well, we have three nice, attractive people here now, panel, each of whom claims to be Pat Scott, sewing columnist, and we'll start this cross-examination with our own hemstitcher, Betty White. Thank you, Bud. <laughs> Isn't that funny? When I read my affidavit, I read it, I answer questions from home sewers. That just shows what kind of reader I am. Number one, what is the difference between picoing and hemstitching? Hemstitching is just a regular sewing uh, stitch, and um, picoing is a sort of a cross stitch on a hem. Uh, number two, could you answer that question? Well, a pico edge is sort of a little uh, fancy edge that you put on things, and a hem stitch is a type of embroidery stitch, or it can be a different kind of stitch that's done on a hem. And number three, do you agree with that? Uh, picoing is usually put in, I believe, by a machine, and then cut, the salvage is cut. 
I the other see. is hand stitch. I see. Uh, number one, how many variations would you guess there are to the feather stitch? There's only one variation. Number two, do you agree with that? There, no, I don't. You don't? Ralph. I'm lost here. I don't know anything. <laughs> Just take the Number cue. One, Ralph, what? take yeah. the cue from Betty. Just think of sewers, and you're all right. <laughs> Number one, what syndicate are you with? <laughs> I'm with the Field Syndicate. Field Syndicate. What paper in or near New York? What's the closest one to New York, if not New York? Uh, the Chita Chicago Times. That's not very close to New York. <laughs> number two, what's a gusset? No, I'm going to ask number three. What's a gusset? I'd rather hear it from a man. I have uh, no idea what a gusset is. A gusset is a square piece of material that's usually superimposed over a seam in a sleeve. Not a, uh, in a raglan sleeve, not a set in sleeve. What's it for? Why should it's, you sew that to, over? Uh, it's to uh, uh, relieve tension on a seam. Seams have tension. <laughs> 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 Lorraine, what about you? Uh, number two, what is rosebud? I beg your pardon? What is rosebud? Rosebud? Yes. Uh, it's a type of lace. Uh, number one, what is rosebud? It's a type of lace. Number three, what is rosebud? I believe it is a type of lace. It's what you, <laughs> it's what you gather while you may. Number one, <laughs> what is the uh, strangest question you have received? from a, a do-it-yourself sewer? Or uh, how to enlarge in a pattern. How to what? enlarge a what? A pattern. How do you enlarge a pattern? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just... Um, enlarge it. <laughs> just enlarge it. You, you, instead of following the uh, design on the paper, you go beyond that. Figures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny, do you care to pass through the eye of this needle? I don't know where to start. Uh, uh, number number three. When you have a zipper and it comes apart at the bottom and you're about halfway up, <laughs> you know, how do you get it back to where you started? I mean, when it tears apart, it's usually you buy a new one. <laughs> no, really. You know, if it comes loose at the bottom, yes. and you're halfway through... He's talking about a lady's dress, you understand. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> how? <laughs> no, I've often wondered, how do you get it back? What is the Tell best way? Should you I pull it? If you do. Hmm? I don't think you do. I want you to lock it <laughs> Well, well, that's I'm, it. I'm not going to walk around this I'm way the rest of the week. That's why I am. <laughs> Johnny, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave you with your zipper stuck right there. Halfway. <laughs> and mark our ballots, if you will, please. Do so now without further consultation or confusion. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Oh, ballots marked. Johnny, are you pondering or have you marked? I, I, I voted. <laughs> okay, Ralph, for whom did you vote? Uh, number three. I thought uh, number one kind of slipped up or had a little difficulty. Uh, number three, I thought number one kind of slipped up or had a little difficulty enlarging the pattern over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the answer about the gusset. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but uh, I was interested to learn that... Um, uh, you got to do something with seams after they're seams, and they seem to... <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine. Well, uh, really, I wouldn't uh, pick any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of feel that uh, anyone who's a columnist should have known that Rosebud is a sleigh, you know, for Hearst in that famous picture, Citizen Kane. And uh, uh, it seems that any newspaper man would have been interested in this picture, and it was such a big thing. But I will select number two because I think you put the two fellows on just to make us think it's a fellow because it should be a girl. That's pretty tricky reasoning. All right. All right. Johnny. <laughs> Lorraine took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> just as well, I voted for number one. <laughs> Betty, which one is your choice? 
Well, I don't mean to quarrel with Ralph. I voted for number three, but he almost lost me on the gusset answer because uh, to me a gusset is something altogether different, but I bought the Pico answer. So I think it's two and three. I think they're both in the column business. <laughs> in cahoots. All right, we've sewn our way up to a very fine seam here, and as we learn the truth, we learn it right now as we discover which one of these three persons is the real sewing columnist. So will the real Pat Scott please stand up? <laughs> You're the first one tonight is our guest to guess right. You did real well on that one. Let's... Well, I feel wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out about the other two. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Otto Lohman. I'm from Union City, New Jersey, and I work for a charity fund organization by raising funds. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, number three, you got the greatest number of darts. Uh, <laughs> what is your real name and what do you really do? My please? name is Fred Dimmock. I'm the assistant manager at Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> Oh, and you did pretty well in fooling. Only one uh, correct vote. That means three incorrect. And that means, of course, that $250 each, a total of $750 for your free Christmas shopping. And, of course, a carton of Salem cigarettes on your way out. Thank you so much for being with us and many fine stitches. Keep on right. believing. Good night. God bless you. Bye. Yes, Ralph. It's too late. I was just going to ask, and I think in all fairness we should be told, what is a gusset? Well, now, let's kind of hold on to that. Maybe I'll have the information for the show is over here. I'll find one and show it to you somewhere along the line. You know, the coldest, dreariest day in the winter doesn't seem quite so bad when you look at it this way. Now, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is John Carruthers. My name is John Carruthers. My name is John Carruthers. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, John Carruthers, am an expert on reindeer. Our family business is the importing, raising, and renting of these animals. This is our busiest season since we provide Christmas reindeer for Santa's villages, department stores, and civic organizations. Although we do breed reindeer in captivity, we also go into the Arctic to replenish our herd. We buy them from the Eskimos and return with a couple of dozen animals on each trip. Outside the Arctic, our reindeer herd is the largest in the world. Signed, John Carruthers. <laughs> All right, panel. These three Donder, Prancers, and Blitzens all claim to be John Carruthers, reindeer experts. We'll start with Lorraine Day. Lorraine? Uh, number one. What do you do with the reindeer off-season? Uh, they're at the Santa's Villages the year-round. They're where they work the year-round. They have no off-season, in other words. Uh, number two, where is Santa's Village? Santa's Village is in, we have several of them. We have one in uh, Illinois, and we have one in Santa Cruz, California. Santa Cruz, California? Right. Uh, number three, is there a Santa's Village near Lake Arrowhead, California? There is. Number one, do they have reindeer at Santa's Village? Yes, all Arrowhead. three of them. Are they your reindeer? Yes. Johnny. Uh, n number two, what, what's the difference between a reindeer and an elk? A reindeer and elk, an elk, a reindeer is much smaller than an elk. A reindeer weighs around, oh, 300 pounds and it probably stands no higher than three and a half, four feet. An elk is much larger. Uh, number two, what do you charge to rent a reindeer? <laughs> you know, in case it comes up. <laughs> number? Uh, number three. Uh, oh. Just one reindeer, I, you know. I, I thought you said two. What do we charge? Yes, for renting, say one uh, reindeer. Around four hundred dollars, but that would include uh, four reindeer and a Santa Claus to go with. It. Oh, the whole the whole business. That's right. That's no, number one. Uh, whereabouts in the Arctic do you, do you, do you get these reindeer? On the coast of Alaska, near Nome. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number two. What is a caribou? What is a caribou? It's uh, in the deer family, and it's found mostly in, uh, up in Alaska and northern Canada. Number three, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Uh, number one, what is the difference between a reindeer and a caribou? 
A caribou is a wild animal, a game animal. A reindeer is a domestic animal. Number two, could you give me just a few uses that the Eskimos make of these animals? Caribou or reindeer? Reindeer. Reindeer. Uh, Eskimos kill them off quite plentiful, but they also use them for work animals. Happy. Not happy. Ralph. John. <laughs> uh, number one, I saw a wonderful picture uh, a while ago called, I think, Valley of the Eagles, if I'm not mistaken. They seem, the reindeer seem to be quite tame, and I just heard you say they're, they're domestic animals. Uh, is this true? Uh, yes, it is true. They are domestic animals. When we get them, they're wild they, because of the fact that they haven't been around people. But they do have the, well, the inherent intelligence to be trained and domesticated and made gentle, perfectly gentle. Number two, uh, what do they eat when they're in their wild condition or before they're captured? Uh, in the summer, they usually just eat... Well, uh, let's say the wintertime. In the wintertime, they eat mosses and uh, greens off in trees. I guess that's it. Once again, we've come down to the moment of finding out what's what and who's who and who's voting for which and why. So suppose you do so. Will you mark your ballots, please, panel, and do it now without further consultation. And vote as you do for number one, number two, or number three. All right, everybody set and marked. Ralph, for whom did you vote this time? Uh, number one. That was a pretty good answer he gave me, and uh, uh, I almost went for number three, but number two, uh, number one looks as if he'd been outdoors a good deal, too. Number one. Lorraine, what is your choice? Well, um, I selected number three. Well, I mean, do I give my reason now, or does sure. the bell stop sure. me? Sure, no, no. Give well, me. that's too bad, because I really don't have a very <laughs> No, I selected it because uh, when he said his name up there on the, on the stand, it didn't sound like it was very familiar to him. Okay. Johnny. I voted for number three because he's a pretty good salesman. I just wanted to rent one reindeer, and he tried to unload a Santa Claus and three more reindeer. <laughs> uh, Betty, which one is your choice? Oh, I'm flying blind tonight. I voted for number one. <laughs> Johnny says because he has a red nose, and that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't think if they're domestic animals, I don't think the Eskimo would, would uh, kill off reindeer too much, and we didn't get a chance to ask number three enough questions, so I'm going to go for with number one. You know, you're all pairing off interesting. It's the second time tonight. You and Ralph, number one, and uh, Lorraine and Johnny, and number three there. We're all going out after the show. Yeah, I guess you are. <laughs> all right, let's see who's what and which is which now as we learn which one is. So, will the real... Reindeer expert, John Carruthers, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you, sir, very much. Now let's find out about the others. Number two, uh, you didn't get any votes, I'm sorry to say. What do you really do and what is your real name? My name's Thurlow Cooper. I'm from Augusta, Maine. I play professional football in the New York Titans. Hey. <laughs> And number three, your real name and what you really do. Well, my real name is Johnny Marks. I am a songwriter. I never raised any reindeer. <laughs> but among the songs I have written is Rudolph the <laughs> Red Nose. <laughs> I think it's only fair to tell you that he hasn't gone out of the business either. One of the most recent ones he's written. I almost hesitate to say, is rockin' round the Christmas tree. That's <laughs> one of his newest ones. It's a hit. It's but a hit. I know, that's what I hear. And Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I think you should know, has sold to date over 33 million copies. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> well, a Merry Christmas to all. We check the score, we find there were two right and two wrong. Meaning, of course, in that case, that there were uh, two at $250 for a total of $500, gentlemen, for your free Christmas shopping. And we hope you had fun visiting us. We enjoyed thoroughly having you here. Good night and good luck to you. And pick up a cotton of Salem on your way out. <laughs> now a word about wrist and decongestant tablets. That's all the time we have for tonight, except to remind all of you something I'm sure you know, that regular investment in savings bonds is a surefire way to establish something for that rainy day. So join the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond a month plan at your bank. Lorraine, it was certainly nice having you with us tonight. Well, I've really enjoyed myself. Come back again. Thank you. Johnny, a little bit of word for you. I found out finally and authoritatively that Augusta is the shortest distance between two zippers. <laughs> Next
next week, we'll all be back with Keith Merrill to round out our panel. And this is Bud Carly saying good night, panel. And good night to all of you from Salem and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Thompson production. has been brought to you tonight by Salem, a cigarette that refreshes your taste. This is Johnny Olson saying goodnight for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.